question one why is the catalyst in a finely divided state well when it's powdered form there will be a larger surface area for the reactants to rest upon so it will increase the speed of reaction question two which of the following will have one of the ratio to be five this will require a bit of trial and error in this case the answer is one or the answer is a we try to balance the carbon first there are four carbons here then we balance the hydrogen there's a total of eight hydrogens so we put four here and then we try to balance the oxygen here we have 12 oxygen there are already two over this side so over here we need 10 and then this will be one so it happens that this ratio is five so a is the answer if it's not then we have to do a bit of trial and error as you go um, down the options number three from which one is the removal of the electron most difficult it might help if you write out the configuration 288 so removal of electrons from the inner shell is the hardest so it's between B and D and then we have to check the number of protons D have 11 protons so it will hold on to its outer electrons more strongly than B which has only 9 protons so it's the hardest remove from sodium plus number four we have to find out the mass of ammonia at the end of the reaction after during equilibrium so it will help if you write out the balance equation first and then we will try to work in terms of moles okay for convenience sake i'll change instead of 560 kilograms i will view it as grams and just to make the numbers more manageable so in terms of grams 560 these are the number of moles we divide by the mr 560 divided by 28 120 divided by 2 and then we have no ammonia at the start and then the other op in information it is at the end it contains 96 in this case grams of hydrogen so finally we'll have 48 moles of hydrogen so these are the information that we can set up at the start and then we have to see the change for 60 to drop to 48 it must have a it must have used up 12 moles and then that will affect your ammonia for every 12 moles used up 12 divided by 3 times 2 we will have 8 moles of ammonia produced so at the end we have 8 moles of ammonia form 8 moles of ammonia we multiply by the MR 8 times 17 We have 136 grams but since ultimately we have to change it to kilograms okay so you'll be 136 kilograms so set up the equilibrium table and view in terms of moles and then figure out the changes that will be affecting the reactants and the products Number five, bromine and trichloromethane. What types of intermolecular attraction do, do they have? Bromine, Br2, is just induced dipole. Trichloroethane, I have to change this to three chlorines instead. There is a dipole moment because chlorine is more electronegative. So overall, there's a dipole moment for this molecule 
So this molecule will have permanent dipole, permanent dipole attraction, but because it also has electron clouds by default, it will also have induced dipole, induced dipole. So by default, they will definitely have induced dipole. It's just that on top of induced dipole, it also has permanent dipole. Number six, P, Q, and R, what might be the identities? There's quite a bit of information. So what we can do is we can check the high melting point will be relevant for both magnesium oxide and silicon dioxide and then we can see that the conductivity magnesium oxide at liquid state will contain ions so it will be able to conduct whereas silicon dioxide will not be able to conduct under liquid state so it can't be silicon dioxide okay, it's magnesium oxide for P Q for potassium chloride and sodium fluoride there's very little to separate them because they are both giant ionic so most of the characteristics are similar we try to check out R instead for R you can see that they said R is insoluble in water ammonia is quite soluble in water to get aqueous ammonia so that is not a good description for ammonia this is our organic compound which is not very soluble in water so by doing that we can actually see that it's B seven what will change your KP well, KP will only be affected by temperature just like KC and all that so that's actually a straightforward reaction or uh, straightforward question Temperature is the only one that affects Kp. The others will either shift the equilibrium left or right. If you add a catalyst, it doesn't shift the equilibrium left or right. It will just ensure that equilibrium will be achieved faster. Number 8. Which one has an element in the plus 2 oxidation state? And an odd number of electrons. So we figure out the plus 2 first. I write out the oxidation states here there are two possibilities A your carbon is plus 2 inside here and C your nitrogen is plus 2 here so we have to check the second condition odd number of electrons one way to do it is we add up the valence electrons so carbon has 4 oxygen has 6 we have an even number nitrogen has 5 oxygen has 6 we have an odd number. If we have an odd number of electrons, okay, we will have one unpaired electron, but okay, we only need to find out odd number, so that's, that's sufficient. So having odd number of electrons and plus two oxidation state, that will be your nitrogen monoxide. Number nine, we have instead of a pressure for gases we have a pressure in terms of your your aqueous substance osmotic pressure but it's still the same the higher the number of moles you have the higher your pressure you exert so what can we deduce from this hydrolysis equation when it's hydrolyzed we get more molecules of your sugar molecules so the pressure of the the osmotic pressure will actually be increasing okay, because you have more moles of your sugars and then we check what is optical or structural isomers if we look from left to right you can see that the structure of glucose and fructose in terms of the order are not the same okay, especially this one we have a CHO and then here is your hydroxyl group and this is aldehyde group so they can't be structural they can't be optical isomers okay, because optical isomers are mirror images 
they are structural isomers because they have the same chemical formula it's just that they are arranged differently Hess's law for bond energy in methane one way we can do it is we can write out the heat of formation for methane carbon plus hydrogen CH4 and then we link it to bond energy okay, because we need to calculate the average bond energy so this is the cycle that we have so what we need is atomization of your carbon atomization of your hydrogen and then this one link to your bottom will be four times of bond energy so the information required atomization of carbon atomization of hydrogen this is actually the heat of formation and all that we have three of these arrows and this fourth arrow is the bond energy so we require these three information to calculate the average bond energy which element increase in oxidation number during this reaction I've written out the oxidation numbers at the bottom okay, bromine plus 3 fluorine is always plus 1 in a compound it's the most electronegative oh sorry fluorine is always minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 here so that will make your bromine to be plus 3 okay so plus 3 to 0 minus 1 throughout oxygen was minus 2 and then it became 0 titanium was plus 4 throughout so increasing oxidation number only oxygen increases during the reaction